Hi and welcome back to Shouting Electronics. Our next patient on the workbench is this hybrid PA600MII or M2 public broadcasting amplifier. That's basically got a few inputs, mic inputs, line inputs, tone control, main volume and then different zone outputs which aren't really used in this case. And then if we look on the back, Okay, we've got our mains input. We've got our common and 8 to 16 ohm output for normal speakers. Then you've got your 70 volts and 100 volts line output. For your distributed audio, we've got a long run of cable and uh, quite a few speakers on the line with transformers in them. And then these are channel 1, 2, 3, 4, so you can have separate levels set. But basically this customer just uses common and the 100 volts outputs. This amplifier still looks in quite a good condition because it is only a few months old. It was put in and then with the rainy season that we had this December and January, moisture was just coming down the walls and things like that and there was heavy condensation on this amplifier and it stopped working. So what I did, I first opened it up after I received it and I did a lot of screws and I checked that that fuse was in order there, that 5 amp onboard fuse. And that fuse actually tested okay. So I thought that's strange, let me plug it in. I plugged it in and it was dead, no power. So then I thought, okay, well let me trace the power from the back. So let's, okay, this is one of those fuse hold, uh, one of these IEC inputs with a fuse holder. So I slid the little fuse holder thingy out and I heard crunching the whole time I was pulling it out. And I didn't get much else with this. Because if you look inside here, I don't know if you can see, but that fuse has been totally destroyed. In fact, the little end caps of the fuse are still in there. And that's supposed to be a 5 amp 250 volt fuse according to the label. The fuse on the board is also a 5 amp fuse. So, so much for coordination. Okay, so your supply comes in through the IEC connector, through the uh, fuse on the top, and then it travels in on those two connect on that connector there. And if we follow it underneath, little aerial wire is getting my way here. If he's not careful, he's going to get cut off anyway. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. AC input comes here. Straight away, it goes into this common mode choke. That's over here. And then from there it goes to the other fuse and the MOV and or well, the thermostat to do a slow inrush. Yeah, you know, the NTC thermostat, let's show you that there. So there's the NTC thermostat. So the supply goes from these wires through here, the common mode choke, through the NTC thermostat and in through the fuse to the rest of the circuit. Now this fuse not blowing, but the front fuse getting destroyed like that leads me to believe that there was something on this input side before that fuse. Okay, let's take a look at the common mode choke. So there is the common mode choke. And if you look there, there's arcing and charring and that. So I think this, in, this common mode choke, it actually, with the moisture, it actually started arcing a bit there. Maybe the insulation was a bit damaged. And it actually destroyed the continuity on both windings. So I could just pull it out and bridge it out with a wire to test. But I've got a choke I've pulled out of another device that's not being used. So I'm just going to swap that choke quickly off camera. And then we'll test it and see if it goes bang. Good. After a big ugly wrestling match finally in place. Okay, now let's clean up the fuse or what's left of the fuse. Look at that, it actually arced through, I don't know if you can see it there, but anyway. on my desk. I think I'm gonna, for now I'm going to make the onboard fuse a uh, 10 amp. 
just for testing purposes. Then the fuse from the IEC connector will make that the 5 amp. Although if this thing does go pop, it's going to go pop in a big way. So we just put the fuse into the little holder like that and then slide it into the IEC sockets. 70 check while you're looking. Okay, now. Let's plug the cable in, that's a good start. Okay, it doesn't look like got a dead short there. Yep, looks good. So I think we are ready to switch off the fuse. Uh, switch off the switch first. Hope it's off. Plug in. You're a fan. Ooh, I'm a fan, I'm a fan. And yeah, we got a light. We got the little thing saying no no flash drive installed. Okay. Now over here I've got a speaker that goes with these PA systems here. If you look over here, it's basically got a little, it has a normal speaker. Then here's a little transformer and you can choose different taps. So if I choose black and 1.7K, it should give us six watts. So if I go black and white, Let's see, black and white, 1.7K, 1.7K, 6 watts, okay. So we said black and white. Hundred volt line. The reason they use 70 volt or 100 volt lines for speakers that are so far apart is because you got a higher voltage. So for the same amount of power going to the speakers, you use a lower current and your current and resistance work together. So the longer your line is, the more resistance, and the higher current you draw, the more drop you get on the line, and it gets softer. So at least by running 100 volts, you can run a lot of speakers together, as long as they don't exceed the amplifier's rating, and they can be far apart. Okay, so now, I should be connected to this amplifier. Let's just turn the volume down. And let's play something and see what happens. Okay, so it does work with Bluetooth. The speaker doesn't sound the best because speakers generally need a box to be in to help them reverberate and things like that. So, I'm standing on pieces of glass shoes. I knew that would happen. Okay, so that was that. That was quite an easy fix, just really a fuse that blew because of the common mode choke. So now I can go button this thing up. I'll probably just leave it on overnight, just running, just as a burn in test. Obviously, get the right value fuse and then button it up and basically give it back to the customer. That was a quick, easy fix. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified whenever we upload new content. And if you ever want to know when we upload new content to this channel, click the subscribe button and then click that little bell icon and you'll be notified as soon as anything interesting comes on. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it.